Speaking of voices blending well, let's talk about these white women and their take on um, Beyonce's album. White people, if you don't want to hear the truth, this is your time to leave. Yeah, because I know that this is Craig is about to do the things, and I don't really know if I want Craig to do the things. Because we're gonna go into the Mexico story after this. Yeah. So we about to sit in the we about to sit, sit in the white space for just a second. <laughs> Where are we sitting? We sit in the white space for just a moment. It's okay. We're gonna actually we're gonna sit there for four minutes. Okay. Okay. You ready? Put the screenshot. This is a screenshot, and we're gonna play this down in the banger. Oh, oh. Video. okay. Let's do it. Go ahead. I did not like Beyonce's album. If you're in the Beehive Scroll, this is just my opinion. No one has to get mad because music is subjective. I want to talk about how this video relates to both Taylor Swift and James Carville. So a couple months ago, I was having a conversation with a family friend. We were talking about Taylor Swift. She was telling me she got to see her last summer in concert. I was like, that sounds really cool. I heard it was an amazing tour. She was like, it's the most incredible experience I've ever had. Having a conversation about it. And then she asked me, do you like Taylor Swift? And I said that she's definitely talented. I like some of her music, but I'm more of a Beyonce fan. And she immediately flipped a switch. She was like, I hate when people do that, especially women. Why does there always have to be like this comparison between the two? Why does everybody always have to bring that up? And I'm gonna tell you the reason that I always say that is because of that reaction right there, because of the response she gave me. It actually has nothing to do with Taylor Swift. I don't know her. It has to do with the way that white women in particular interact with Taylor Swift. The way that y'all make it like she's beyond reproach. That you defend her no matter what. Well, she does carbon offsetting. Well, she gave bonuses to everybody that was on her tour. Well, she's just an artist who wants to make music. Why does she have to speak on all these political issues? The level to which y'all demand grace be given to Taylor Swift is a never afforded to black women. It, it's... um. You know, at the end of the day, Taylor Swift is still a straight white woman, billionaire, living in the richest and most powerful superpower on the entire planet. And that inherently comes with its own set of privileges. And it's privileges a lot of white women have a hard time coming to terms with. And this is where it starts to apply to more than just music and where James Carville comes into the conversation. So if you're unaware, last week, James Carville, who's a Democratic strategist, helped to get Bill Clinton elected in 92, opened his mouth and decided to let everyone know he thinks the reason that minority men are leaving the Democratic Party, you know, black men, Hispanic or Latino men, um, that they are choosing to leave the Democratic Party because there's too many, quote, preachy females coming out of the Democratic Party, it's got too much of a feminine voice. And then when given the opportunity later on to clarify that position, to apologize, to do anything at all, he chose to double down by saying that he keeps hearing how women, and in particular women of color, will decide this next election. And that that's interesting because 48% of the voting electorate are men. What are we doing to consider their opinion? And this is where those um, privileges and uncomfortable conversations I was talking about earlier start to come into play because this starts to get a little tricky for white women because we oftentimes want to separate our whiteness from being a woman. We don't get to do that. The same way, you know, black women don't get to separate being black from being a woman or indigenous from being a woman, AAPI, Hispanic and Latina. They experience them at the same time. This is where understanding that white women interact with that statement differently than women of color do. It is understanding that while both Beyonce and Taylor Swift may be billionaires, they experience it differently. It is understanding the difference between James Carville's first statement saying that the Democratic Party has too much of a feminine voice and in the second statement making sure to point out women of color in particular. It is recognizing that an album maybe you don't necessarily like is having massive impacts in ways that don't affect you because you don't experience them. It, not even just, I don't understand them. You need to understand them. You need to understand how certain people interact with this shit differently because you don't experience it. This is where intersectional feminism comes into play and how it applies to the things we say we want. Whether it be autonomy over our own bodies, financial freedom, freedom from the patriarchy, overall liberation. These things aren't experienced as like a monolith. It is understanding that we as white women experience things differently than other women do because we walk through the world differently than other women do. It's taking the knowledge we have that as white women, we experience these systems differently than other women do and applying that to the real world. It is understanding that white women take this attitude and energy and apply it to every other interaction and aspect in their lives, whether or not you voted for Donald Trump. So until white women start embracing intersectional feminism, nothing's going to change. Because the point wasn't really about whether or not you liked Beyonce's album. It was the way you went about it. And I hope that this laid it out in a way that helps you to better understand why a lot of people were upset with that take.
I did not like Beyonce's album. If you're in the Beehive, scroll. This is just my opinion. No one has to get mad because music is subjective. I want to talk about how this video relates to both Taylor Swift and James Carville. Okay, Craig. So can you summarize that for us, please? Because you know you have your your uh your social oh. so uh social degree, social economic degree. In no, I have a mass media arts degree. Okay, well, with your mass media arts degree, summarize this because I I can summarize it, summarize it up after you do it. Well, no, I mean, I, I think she, I think she summed it up. I mean, I think they got what she was saying. My thing is, she made a lot of valid points. Lots. You know what I'm saying? And part of what she is, what she said in there is kind of what we've talked about before in terms of how white women show up in the world, period. Remember how I said a few weeks ago that white women often vote in the interest of white women. Where black women, when black women vote, they vote in the interest of all women. Right. And then she said something else about white women will choose their whiteness over their womanhood. Well, so do the white fags. The white gay men will do that as well. White gay men can't wait to put a black queen in their place. Well, that's why they'll I, choose their whiteness over their. That's why I was not so uh, easily behind that white queen tearing Todrick up like that. Well, c correct, because that's what I'm saying. Like they'll make you think you're part of the family. I wasn't so easy like letting that white queen tear up Tajra like that. Right, I and wasn't. then they tear you up. So that's why I slid over there like, nah, let's let's get the variables into this. You feel me? Now here's my thing with this with this white woman. She 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 spoke so eloquently mm -hmm. to say, bitch, I fuck with Beyonce, and that right. and that Taylor Fish Swift is mediocre, mm -hmm. and she understands that she's mediocre in the way that she that would she's there ain't no comparison between the two. They're two different entities. They are, you know. Both of them are billionaire women, right? But because Taylor Swift is white, of course there are things like, like she's dating that guy Kelsey, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. The the bitch, he got a a haircut, and they was talking about they trying to see how they try to gentrify that. Now his haircut is the they call it the, the what they is, call it by his name, whatever his name what is. is. It? Travis the Travis yeah. Kelsey right. cut. But isn't it called a Caesar? Try a fade. A Caesar's just fade. even all over. Yeah. That's just a fade. Niggas been getting fades since the beginning of the time. So but it's it Travis Kelsey. Right, and there's no yeah, Travis Kelsey. But it's no different than what they did when uh uh Kim Kardashian wore them the, cornrows. The, those cornrows. Bo Derek did it. It's like now this is this is the thing to do, you know? And it's just like, girl, right. what the fuck? And it's and it's back to me talking about how they always try to find a place for us mm -hmm. and then they pick pieces of pieces of stuff that they like from us and, they, and a white bitch or a foreign bitch will put it on and they they know everywhere to put mm -hmm. them and it's like oh my god this is this is amazing this is so innovative it's so in vogue it's so innovative it's so creative mm -hmm. you're like what the fuck that bitch went over there i braided that whole hair mm -hmm. my mother couldn't stand when we would go on vacation we'd be in aruba or jamaica or somewhere and you know like in the little flea markets or like the city central or whatever they would have like people selling stuff like the open market but they would always have people there braiding hair. My mother couldn't stand when those little white girls or those white women were out there getting their hair braided. Girl. My mother, we can't have nothing. <laughs> she couldn't stand. I'm all glad it. We can't have nothing. They girl, my nerve. girl, we were in Italy and I seen them over there doing it. Mm -hmm. In Italy, you seen them all. But then a black woman going to her corporate job and they trying to tell her that she can't take wear that her hair out. like that. You got to take that out. Right. But y'all got to stop inviting every goddamn body to the cookout too. The proverbial cookout. Are, are we? Do you really want to talk about it, Craig? Yes, because y'all every time somebody no. white can sing a little bit, or they can dance a little bit, or they speak about. I black mean, do issues. you really want to motherfucking talk about? Y'all invite them to the cookout. Do you really want to motherfucking the talk about? The cookout is full. Do you really want to motherfucking talk about it? Talk about it. They invited Kim Kardashian them that the Kardashians down to the cookout. Who else they invite? But I mean, Kim is still a part of the cookout. Kim ain't part of no cookout just because she if fucking. You want to be technical with it, how? Oh. She's she still only date black men. They don't make her part of the cookout. It don't. She ain't bringing no potato salad. She ain't bringing nothing but those skin tight ass dresses. You that know, does not make her you, part of the cookout. You know those white women are motherfucking y'all niggas kryptonite. Oh God, a white bitch. Oh shit, that bitch fine and bad and exotic right. and exotic. Bitch, please. Every time I look up, somebody black talking about oh, bring him to the cookout. What? And since I'm table shaking, go ahead. What about that motherfucking Dominican girl over there talking about that honey Dominicans? It's not black. That's See? what she said. See, where's that? Put it on up there. I don't 
screenshot. Well, put the screenshot oh, on there. Oh, right. Oh, I sent it to you on your Instagram. She said Dominicans is not black. That's I, what she said. And I just talked about that last week. She just said it. She said it's on your Instagram. It is, but look, let me just play it through. Because I don't like playing through this shit because she said, I just want to let y'all know. You can't do it on that one through your Instagram? Did we put it in here right I here? I put it on your Instagram. We put it here. What about? She's still in her text message. I said Instagram. <laughs> no, Craig, but like if we play it from here, you get what I'm saying? Let me do it here. She said this. Dominicans are not black. We are not black. And no matter how much black Americans cry about it, we are not black. We will never be black. Yes, I look black, but we are not black. And it is just a reminder to black Americans who are so pathetically forcing Dominicans to label themselves as black. When we keep telling them we have our own culture, we know black poppy, they still force it on us. So just a reminder, Dominicans are not black. Period. When the ones that actually claim their blackness, <laughs> it's sorry guys, but some of you guys be like, I know black, I know black, I know black, impossible, I know black, I'm Dominican, I'm Puerto Rican, I know black, be looking just like me, be like, be having the same hair, I be touching you guys, it's not the same, it's not the same, it's not the same, papi, it's not the same, they try to salsa that shit off, I be like, no, it's not the same, I know black, negro, nunca, nunca, I know ne no, no, nunca, I know black, I'm like, no, you black, no, 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 I know black. Dominica, I go, I know, but you're black. No, 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 puppy. I know black. No, no, black, black, black. <laughs> Reminder that Dominicans are not black. Ain't nobody say African American. Who said they were African American? They're Dominican, but they black. Your skin color is black, basically. That's you, you think your Dominican ass is pulled off on the side of the highway at three in the morning? Who you think gonna stop for you first? My black ass or a white bitch? Tell that to the police when they pull you over. Soon as somebody say, soon as somebody, oh, they black. No, they not. And I'll be able to say, mm -mm. no, they not. Watch your mouth. Yeah, they got a little black in them. Yeah. Mm -mm. Don't do that. I want you to see a play years ago called Platanos and Collard Greens. It was off Broadway. Wait, it's called Plantanos? Platanos. Platanos. And Wait, Craig, I like the way you pronounce it. Where is it, Craig? Platanos. Platanos. And Collard Greens. And Collard Greens. Yeah. And it was about a Dominican girl who was in love with this black guy. They were in love with each other. And it talked about how a lot of Dominican people come to this country and their families basically tell them to stay away from black people because you don't want to get caught up in that. You know, they're, they're low income, they're uneducated. They're, like, the truth is, a lot of times when people immigrate to this country, they try, whether it's Asian folk or Dominican folk or wherever the fuck they're coming from, a lot of times, oftentimes, they try to get in close proximity with white people. So the play, yes, it was in New York for years. Yes, you all know what I'm talking about. Blandinos. Blandinos and collard greens. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and that was basically what the show was about. It was about this couple that was in love, a, a Dominican girl and a black guy, and their families, in particular her family, the Dominican family, was not for that shit. And, um, yeah. But, again, because they skin brown like this, we colors, oh, they at the cookout. When they saying, I don't want to go over there. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I, I ain't no eat that. Right. I no eat it. No quiere. Mm -hmm. I no eat. But we be the man quick, the first one. And I be able to say, no, them people's not black. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mariah Carey daddy is black. I said, but what what is what has America accepted her mostly as? <laughs> Celine Dion, she black. She from she Haitian. Celine Dion. She's Creole. She's French. Celine Dion? She's from Canada. You must ain't been watching. Because I be looking at all this. I'm like, well, when she turned black? When it? Hmm. Oh. No, so, no, sweetie. Whitney Houston is black. <laughs> and black like that. Mm -hmm. East Orange, New Jersey. You have black or brown skin. So just to get them off. 
Oh, somebody wrote it in diaspora. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. You part of the African diaspora. Sorry. Ooh, J Lo got the biggest booty. They had they was really pumping J Lo up all those years. Like she had, she really had a, a a a big ass. Like the like the girls. And I was I go back and look at all those pictures from back then. And I'm that's, I'm looking to see that she's shapely. Mm hmm. But you stand her in front of some 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 real ass. She vanishes. I did want to say about that video, though, I don't want to take away from Taylor Swift because they are two separate artists. They are. And and I'm not here to say whether who's better. I am. <laughs> but I think, I am. I think that I've listened. Listen, Taylor, she has nice songs, good songs. And Taylor but, writes her and ass And she off. writes her ass off. She has good, catchy songs. So I don't want to minimize like what she I does. Watched, excuse me, Craig, because mm -hmm. I, I watched that bitch take a, a stick. And she beat a stick on the side of the a microphone. She beat on the side of, at the at the concert. And they were screaming, "Oh, God, yes, Taylor!" I was like, "Bitch!" <laughs> she took the microphone thing and hit that shit on the side, and the, the crowd was going crazy. But those are her fans. Right now, I'm not saying that I prefer Taylor because I do prefer Beyonce. Like I watch everything that Beyonce does, and I, I'm not a person who has all of Beyonce's albums. But I watch and study her because I'm a creator. You know what I mean? So I, I like to see the behind the scenes. You know how she put like everything she's done. I've watched the behind the scenes of that shit um, because I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm curious and interested in how she pulls it together and brings it together. Just like with that movie, I wanted to see more of that behind the scenes stuff. That shit intrigues me. Oh, when we watched uh, Renaissance. The, the Renaissance, right? Yeah. But you know, I just I think it's unfortunate that you know they pit these two against each other. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that they give a fuck. I don't really think Beyonce gives a fuck. They make them Who don't? Who you really think they don't? I don't think they sitting there like, oh, I need to outdo her. No, I don't think it's about outdoing, but it's definitely about letting it be known, bitch, you not me. Don't do it. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. I mean, of course, if you especially, ask them. Especially if you are a black woman who, who does the things that this woman does. Yeah, yeah. Whose work ethic is crazy like this. And yeah, this, she definitely works. Her, her work ethic is insane. Yeah, I agree with all of that. And then this woman over here writes a lyric, which is great. Yeah. She writes a lyric, which is good. She gets up there, honey. She got three, four dances in the bag. And they motherfucking stiff as uncooked goddamn spaghetti noodles. And these people are carrying on. And you like, I've done a whole world tour. I have, While I'm here performing, another set is being built. Two. Because uh, she had a total of three sets. Being built in other countries before I even arrived. She said it was, it was sent. It was traveling. While they were performing somewhere, the other two sets were mobile and traveling and setting up in other cities or countries. So like that shit is like that shit is fascinating. Like the way that she dances. Like Taylor ain't dancing and doing all that. No, she's not. Like I. So if I have to choose, then yeah, I'm gonna choose Beyonce. But what I'm saying is, I think they both do what they do well. Taylor's not a dancer, so she doesn't do that well. But she she writes and composes songs well. I'm sorry, and I love everybody, <laughs> Craig. I do. Mm -hmm. But as a black creator. Mm -hmm. Who has sat and watched people pull from me? Mm -hmm. Oh, and I agree with all of that. Who has watched people pull from me from all races, colors, ethnicities, yes. and genres have pulled from me, and then they get in these places, and, and then when we are having meetings, because you've been privy to a lot of the meetings mm -hmm. that we've had mm -hmm. with television and 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 and, and, and networks. Yeah outside of just we tv yeah and they're trying to figure this is amazing this this stuff is like amazing this is, but we're trying to figure out how we're going to this and it, mm -hmm. it's like but you got this person over here yeah yeah that has used 50 of my line let me tell y'all something i love everybody mm -hmm. right there was a meeting that i'm i'm bitch fuck it we pouring go ahead there was a meeting that had went on right and it was an executive meeting somewhere and in a space or whatever. And I and I really like Dylan Mulvaney. I do. Okay. I loved I actually love Dylan Mulvaney. And all the things that have happened to her 
it's, it's, she just picked up her phone and she went to work. Mm -hmm. She was, and she probably don't know that somebody probably gonna show her this. Uh -huh. They had, there was a meeting about her and some project that was going on or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, the, and the people that were having the meeting with her about the stuff, whatever, and my people were having a meeting with the people, whatever, they were, it was so unaware of T.S. Madison, right? And they asked her, who was one of your inspirations? For the, and she said, T.S. Madison. And then they were like, oh, well, we just had, they, what the gag was that they had a meeting about me. Yeah. For some of the, some of the same kind of stuff. Yeah. And then heck on my name again. Right. And it's just like, oh, oh, you, well, we just, it's this type of shit. And it's just like, what, what did, oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying not to be in Girl. this place. But what did Jackie Washington say? They all stole from me. They all stole from me. Little Brandy, Aretha. But just with Jackie Washington. Diane Carroll. I understood in her context today. This is like. Oh, and be author. It's like, girl, <laughs> the, it be, I was doing this shit before those girls, those girls had a, when that, mm -hmm. those girls had a place to look to, it was me. Right. And so don't minimize my presence because y'all took. You tell my Maddie lay in the plane. I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to run that bitch into the building. <laughs> That's what I'm trying not to. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I'm trying not to run that bitch in the building. I'm trying to be very. Mm -hmm. So nobody feels targeted. I just personally feel when I look at these girls who have gotten these deals, these brand stuff, and all this shit going on, and they picked up their phone. I had my phone. Years before, while those girls were trying to find out what they were, vlogging my life, mm -hmm. taking these people on journeys with me, buying cars, getting my business stuff together, all this stuff. Like I've been documenting stuff for year for years. With and it wasn't like nobody didn't see it. Yeah, it wasn't like nobody didn't see it. It was thousands of people. Mm -hmm. following me hundreds of thousands i've had hundreds of thousands of followers following me from way back some of you came in during kaya and that's fine but there were people way prior before that mm -hmm. yeah. that have been following the journey yeah and it's just like you i kicked in the door to this when there were no when no one was doing this and so these girls come they pick their phone up day one of me being a trans mm -hmm. and it's just like this is the most innovative thing I've ever seen. This is the most innovative thing I've ever seen. And it's like, shouty, nah, you know? And then it's always when the, when the conversation comes to me, it's like, we got to try to figure out where to put her. Bitch, these hoes cuss just like me. These hoes turn their camera on and vlog their day just like motherfucking me. They sit down, they eat their food just like I did. They've been doing this stuff just like fucking me. Mm -hmm. So how can y'all find spaces for them? Just explain to me my black skin mm -hmm. and my black experience is kind of not marketable because... Well, they it, don't think that it's important. It's not important. Right! They don't think it's important. They don't see value in it. They don't think the public sees value in it. They don't think that white America advertisers are going to give a fuck. That's what it boils down to. But see, they did the same thing with hip hop. They didn't think hip hop was marketable and valuable. And that shit is selling more than any other yes, genre. Yes, Craig. Music. Yes. And that's how I be feeling when I be looking at this, looking at that type of shit. That's the way I be feeling. Mm -hmm. And I got the right to motherfucking feel yeah. a lot of these ways because I've been on this shit way longer than those folks. But mm -hmm. I don't feel no type of way towards them. I want to yeah, make that clear. Yeah, yeah. I feel type, some type of way towards the, system. To, towards the system that when I come in there and it's just like, well, we don't know where to put You know where to you put You know what the fuck to do with her. What's that little girl name over there on TLC? Yeah, right. Well, you know. You knew where to put <laughs> you knew where to put them. And when you asked them who inspired you or where did you learn how to do one too? Right. I was watching T.S. Madison when I was little. When I, I it's been many times in place, and I don't give a fuck who finna tell me about did I turn this stuff around and make this about me. This is my motherfucking show. And if I want to talk about me on my motherfucking show, I'm going to do that. And if Craig want to talk about him on this motherfucking show, <laughs> this Craig motherfucking show too. So we'll be able to bring shit back to us. <laughs> so I've been in on so many meetings, so many things or whatever. And so many people have been like, 
I, I was just happy. We were just, it's funny. We were just discussing you with this person or this person brought you up or this. And I'm like, do you not see how intertwined I am into culture, girl? Mm -hmm. Are you fucking kidding? Are you crazy? So why are we sitting here and you over here like, mm, I don't, I, I'm trying to figure out, will they know you? 